Welcome back, friends. We are here again. Yes. With another beer and mm -hmm. another video. Yes. The beer today is Legal Remedy Brewing Company. They're down in Rock Hill, South, South Carolina. Yep. And uh, this one is called World Court Mocha Blonde Stout. Sounds good. Awesome. And then with a mocha blonde stout, even though we thought it, you know, dark side, but my bloody Valentine to hear knows when. It's a mouthful. It really is. <laughs> and we'll be right back. Okay, folks, we're gonna jump right into this beer from Legal Remedy. So you know my bloody Valentine better than I do, right? Yes, they are uh, shoegazer music. Okay. And uh, I believe this album came out in 91. It's kind of a famous album called Loveless. Uh, this is one of the tracks on there. Oh, okay. So I have heard of that album. Yes. Name wise. They influenced a lot of some of the grunge bands. Definitely a lot of British bands. Yeah. Like Blur and stuff like that, you think? Oh, yeah, I think yeah. so. Okay. Yeah. I mean, but their stuff is much more. My Bloody Valentine. No prisoners taken. Yeah, there's, is, they just go all out weird. Yes. Okay. Um, so, all right. So we have the World Court Mocha Blonde Stout from Legal Remedy. Um, mm. Mouthful of a name, great beer. Hmm. So, ooh, I smell the, the chocolate right away. Yeah. And there's no real head very candy like. I mean, did you do a hard pour? I can't yeah. remember. Yeah, it was very very I, light head on it. Nothing. Mmm, coffee, white, chocolate, barley, wheat, oats come together with a coffee and white chocolate with this beautiful blonde creation. Mouthful of a name, great beer. That's a crazy description. So I was thinking I was hmm. smelling mocha, mm -mm. but it's really coffee. It, yeah. yeah, it comes off. You know, you ever get the white chocolate mocha at Starbucks? Yeah, but white chocolate technically isn't. Chocolate. chocolate. It's a white right. candy. It's a right. uh, whatever the hell that is. I can't remember what it's called. But it's like a fake chocolate. But th it's very sweet smelling. It smells like a candy and coffee. Like if you're having, like yeah. if you're one of those people that likes to have to chocolate and coffee together, kind of what you pick up on. But I would say one of those fancy lint. Lindor truffles dropped into coffee. Oh. That's what it kind of. I thought, you said some, I thought you were talking about lint. Like, no, no. It's sort of like a lint trap. No, no like a lint trap. Like, you know what you dig out your belly button. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, if now you choke one mind. of those white chocolate Lindors into yeah. a coffee, that's I what it smells that. like to me. Yeah, absolutely. It's a weird, I don't know, weird combination, but smells good. Mmm. Mmm. That's surprising. Much more of a. I don't know it's how almost, to take this yet. You, you're absolutely right with the Lindor. Um, right, it's almost like a candy-ish. But it is. You you can tell. You know that white chocolate flavor. That's sort of sweet. Yeah. Um. But it's not. It's almost like condensed milk a little bit. Yeah, and it's not like sticky sweet. It's no. not like so sweet that you're like woohoo or um. Like, uh, it's not like syrup, you know, it's not syrupy taste in right. it. It's, it has a essence of this stuff in it, which mm -hmm. when you get into those more syrupy, kind of lactose beers that they have now, where it right. kind of coats with the sweetness and it's just too much, this doesn't do that. This gives it more like a coffee body, like a light coffee, like a, a blonde coffee, um, with a touch of candy, white chocolate candy yeah. flavor in it. And it's light. Yeah. It's pretty darn good, actually. It's surprising to me. I didn't really... I mean, the the mouthfeel is so light, it feels like a Pilsner or something like that when you're drinking it, and you right. don't want to believe that's what you're drinking, for lack of a better phrase. But there is... It's not really a coating in your mouth, but it does leave... The flavor lingers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that um, white chocolate yeah. hangs out, and you get the bitterness from the coffee at the back mm -hmm. end. So... But really good, but yeah. different, huh? All right, let's get over to our video reaction. Okay. And while we're sipping on this a little bit longer, we're gonna jump into some My Bloody Valentine. 
Okay. Hold on to your headphones. Okay. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a scared. <laughs> Wait a second. Uh, excuse me. I thought this was a record company logo thing that was going to start. I was wrong. Sorry. <laughs> so, you know, like when you're having like that really good dream, right? Yeah. And you're like, oh, this is so great. I'm eating grandma's cookies. I'm having a great time. My life is perfect. And all of a sudden, this weird, creepy feeling sneaking up and up behind you. That's what this makes me feel like. <laughs> like yeah. It's so cacophonous that it's just like. Yeah, and you know when this album came out, people were confused. They thought he was just layering guitar on top of guitar. Right. But if you pay attention to what he's doing, he's holding that uh, whammy bar. Yeah. And he's using it the whole time. <laughs> Definitely got some effects on it. Oh yeah. Did you put acid in my bed? <laughs> you know, this reminds me of there's some musicians that are like musician musicians. Yeah. Right? Like they influence a whole bunch of people. Yes. But they don't necessarily get uh, they, a following. Right. They never get a following. Now, My Bloody Valentine had a massive, like, critical acclaim. Yeah. Right? It's that kind of band. And there was a time in my life where I had this on repeat all the time. But yeah. the first time I heard it, I thought, my cassette was being eaten by the <laughs> I don't think it's working anymore. I like, I ejected it multiple times to check. Like, right. <laughs> because in the 80s, blowing on it always worked. Oh, yeah. Or tapping it. Nintendo. Maybe punching Cassettes. It. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Yeah, your kid falls down. Just blow. <laughs> yeah. Brush it off. Yeah, just brush it off. You'll be fine. All right, let's go back.
You watch a lot of Netflix, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, there was a movie that had, um, oh, Emma Stone and the dude from Superbad. What's his name? Frick, crap. Can't remember his name. But anyway, they were basically like drug guinea pigs. They were in this freaking test. Oh, yeah. And it was really trippy, and there was weird shit in rooms, and they would go through these little dreams. That's exactly what this reminds me of. But you notice, though, with this song. Yeah. Like, when you break it up, you can't tell as much. But when you... There's... At first listen, it might sound like it's just the same thing all the way through. But there are the changes. Oh, yeah. I hear the Um, changes. And there's no... It didn't occur to me before, but I was paying attention this time. The drums are almost non-existent. No. They're so buried. There's something, but it's... It's just a touch. It almost sounds like bongos in the background on occasion. Yeah. But it's like muffled. It's put under like a heavy compression. So you just... Everything's just like pushed down. But the guitars, I don't know. It's not just him playing guitar. No, no. There's like a synth. There's like the non... Uh, you you, re- uh, you really can't understand what the person is saying. It's just oh, like no. a a moaning, like somebody got stabbed in the foot and got pushed underwater. Take that. Actually, the singing is kind of underwater. Yeah. It comes in just like the yeah. the rest of the music. It's going in and out in waves. Yeah. yeah, and then you get these little things where there's a slightly tonal change where you hear it shift. It's like. Bulls back and they crazy. That's what makes me think of that dissonance makes me think of like Clockwork Orange or something like this. This would have been great music to have at that time for the background, <laughs> like that 70s type of um, not thriller, but what they what they call those um, that art house type of stuff. You right. Know, it's kind of surrealistic. Yes. I mean, it would go well with like Salvador Dali. Or That's what I mean. You could yeah. sit there and like if they had like a 3D Salvador Dali exhibit, you know how like they've been having the Van Gogh and everything right, like that. Right. My bloody Valentine needs to be right oh, over yeah. top of it. The whole time you'd be walking through going, whoa, <laughs> give them a little micro dot when they walk in. No. <laughs> All right, let's get back into it. Look at all the colors, man. What do you see in this ink print? It's a butterfly. Yeah. (laughs) It is a butterfly. It's a fairy. I will do this for you. I know. You feel like you're in a meeting for a new cult. Like, yeah. It's like, this This is how the people joined that uh, doomsday cult where they all thought they were going to space. <laughs> this is the video they play for. I'm going to go buy some Nikes now. <laughs> yeah. Get my tracksuit. Give me my tracksuit. <laughs> I'm ready to go. Looks like a uterus. It does. Right there. sense for it to fade out like that too yeah because any other way it would probably it would it would, it would the flavor would just kind of yeah it would change it. so all right so that is the first my bloody valentine that i've ever actually for lack of a better phrase i've heard of them all over the place right but i've never sat down and listened intentionally like you know it's always played in the background like a right. couple of my friends listen to them but you know, we were drinking, not paying attention, so right. it was just in the background. Didn't even know what it was until every once in a while something would catch your ear and you go, who's this? Yeah, like, you know, like this? one of those things. <laughs> um, so that is totally not what I expected it to be. Um, and it it may be 
the soundtrack for my nightmare tonight. <laughs> well, I will say this. It's okay. different. There's a lot Very of weird. flavors on that album. Yes. This is definitely the trippy, like it makes me think of the Velvet Underground. Oh yeah, and when they do some of that tripping music, yeah. you know, those tripping yeah. balls. I mean, it's, personally for me, there was a time in my life where I would listen to this album front to yeah. back regularly, but now listening to this, I wouldn't be able to play this in the car, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, I, I would get zoned out. Yeah, I would. I would just get lost. And crash into a barrier. Yeah, I'd be like, <laughs> you know, the people that you drive and you're like, what the hell? You? They're listening uh, to this. Oh, you would piss <laughs> off everyone in the car. <laughs> Somebody behind you, like, meh, meh, meh. move. Uh, but there you go. Uh, That's your experience with uh, shoegaze. That's the core of shoegaze wow. right there. So I, I do hear where they can influence some of the groups that came later. Like I do hear Smashing Pumpkins definitely Absolutely. took a lot, Absolutely. a lot from that. Yeah. Um, especially in some of their, like even like today, mm -hmm. if you listen to the background overlaying and everything. Right. Totally see it. But yeah, some of their more. Like I'll stuff up Gish. Yeah. Stuff like that. Definitely, you definitely, definitely pick it up. So different. I'm yeah. not my not my bag, but right. <laughs> different. I, I you know, I'm always open to try new stuff and I know it kind of varies wildly yeah. with all their stuff. There's, so British is, groups typically do that anyhow. Yeah. yeah. This is the trippy stuff. There is the noisy stuff. Yeah, where it's like eh, eh, like the really nasty guitar stuff. Yeah. And cacophony. Well, yeah, cacophony. Dissonance. Like dissonance. Really strong, yeah. loud, cranked up dissonance. Kind of like uh, Sonic Youth kind of took yes. from them a bit. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. That I can handle. And But like even Sonic Youth, they went off the rails a few times. You're like, do you just have a blender in the song or whatever the hell they were using in the one song? Yeah. Was called? <laughs> and it wasn't until their later albums that they... Like got more popular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They tried. They're like, hey, we gotta make a few bucks now. Yeah, yeah. So, but well, all right. So, um, my bloody Valentine. There so that is a great new experience. Um, what about this beer? So, legal remedy. Um, if you guys ever to go Rock Hill, I have been there and I've had uh, a couple of their beers. Uh, not this one in particular. I've had uh, their what's it called pro bono I think is the name of it that I had okay. which is really good it's like a stout or a porter that's a porter um, but this one is really different um, and I can't explain any different than canned slightly candied coffee yeah that's a light roast coffee with a Lindor white chocolate dropped in it. it absolutely. That is That's the perfect description. What I'm going to go for. I so, can't really add much to that. <laughs> yeah, and I think um, overall it's a different style of beer. I'm not really used to it. The Blonde Stout is not something you get a lot. Um, so the body is not like a stout at all. It's more like an ale. Okay. Um, so I'm going to give it just because maybe it's my, I just don't know. Um, but I'm going to put it right at the 3.5 range just because I don't know where all these other beers are at. So I'm going to look for some more Blonde Stouts and then okay. maybe that'll adjust accordingly. We haven't had a lot of these um, with chocolate or, or we had none with white chocolate. None. 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 Um, I like this. It's light. I could drink more than one of these. Oh, yeah. Easy. So I would give it a solid... Right in the middle, 3.5. 3.5, okay. Hey, see, look at us. Look at us. Our Menzies yeah. are sinking. So, um, yeah, I love it. it. So, good. look, guys, so we had Legal Remedies, World Court, Mocha, Blonde Stout. Yep. We had My Bloody Valentine's, To Hear Knows When, even though they don't know where they were. <laughs> <laughs> and I may not know where I am now. So, um, but down below, you'll have a link to both. Make sure you guys click on it because that's the reason why we do the show. We want to uh, expose everybody to new music and new beers around us and beyond. Um, but other than that, we have uh, Bavana. Bavana, right up here. They deliver beer to you. We have a 10% discount. Look down in the description. You can pick out the beers you want, little selection. They'll ship it to you, local craft breweries. Yes. And, and you, know, you can't beat North Carolina. Throw no, the gauntlet down again. There's so it. many good beers in this region. Just get it. 
Uh, oh, and our merch, which you yeah. may see popping up at the bottom of the video. If not, uh, there'll be a link to it. And there's also a link on our all our social media. Some pretty funny stuff. And uh, we're always working on new designs. So, right. all right, guys, we'll talk to you soon. Cheers. Cheers.